everyone, welcome back to April's Homemade. Today we are gonna be making two soups at the same time. And the two soups are this creamy chicken and white rice soup. This has definitely been our family's favorite soup this winter. It is very easy to make and so good. This one is a chicken tortilla and white rice soup. This soup has been serving our family very well for many years and we love it. So thank you for joining me today. I hope you will hit that thumbs up and subscribe to our channel and let's get started. In today's video, there's going to be a lot of cooking and I also want to chat with you a bit about training children up in the Lord. After you watch this video, I hope that you will comment below and tell me, tell me what you came here for. Tell me if you enjoyed the meals the most or the conversation the most, or perhaps it was both. So I hope you will comment below and just, you could even just comment meals, conversation, or both. Or you could just comment me whatever's on your mind. I love to hear from you. I'm going to use this frozen bag of mixed vegetables. I talked about, in a previous video, I talked about how you can save money by using frozen vegetables. I believe it's the how we save on groceries video and I will link that. Now I'm going to chop up two onions, one for each Dutch oven here. Okay, you saw me put a little oil in the bottom of my Dutch oven, so I'm sauteing the onions and I'm throwing in some minced garlic. That always smells really great. Now I'm going to pour in the mixed vegetables. I'm gonna get those a little bit, little bit cooked. Now, oftentimes a soup recipe will call for onions, celery, and carrots. And I will often use the frozen mixed vegetables instead and we really like that a lot more than celery and it kind of it gives you more vegetables and it makes the soup more filling so your family might enjoy substituting that as well now i put some flour in here that's really going to thicken up the soup you just put i just did three spoonfuls of flour and now I'm gonna add some chicken broth just to make sure it doesn't burn. Now when you do your flour, you do have to keep it moving because it will stick to the bottom pretty easily. But if it does stick to the bottom, that is fine. Just, just push it off of the bottom It'll be, it'll be good that way. Don't feel like if it gets stuck to the bottom that your soup is ruined or that, or that um, you can't just scrape it off the bottom. Just go ahead and scrape that flour off the bottom and that's gonna make your soup a lot thicker and more tasty. And I'm adding chicken broth to my other pot the white pot on the right is for chicken tortilla soup and the pink pot on the left is for the creamy chicken and white rice soup. Mm -hmm. 
Now I mentioned in my cook three meals at the same time video that I do not like to cut raw chicken and that I almost never do. So I'm going to put this raw chicken into the soup and let it cook in there and then I will I will make the chicken pieces smaller after they're cooked. And I actually, well, for my creamy chicken soup, I actually did not even remove the chicken. It was so tender because it cooked some the next day as well that it just kind of broke apart as I stirred it. And I never even had to take the chicken out and cut it up. So that was an added benefit to cooking ahead. And just so you're aware, I'm putting about three pounds of chicken thighs into both of these soups. You may decide that you just want one pound or two pounds, depending on your family size. You can also use chicken breasts if you prefer that. I, I actually have not bought chicken breasts in a long time because our family really likes chicken thighs and they are more budget friendly. Now you saw that I am putting in some thyme seasoning to this soup. You can also put in Italian seasoning, um, but I'm just putting in thyme. It is a really nice flavor for this soup. And you can see that I'm still pushing that flour off the bottom, making sure my flour gets incorporated into the soup well and doesn't just stick to the bottom. Now I'm gonna put in a tablespoon of my Better Than Bouillon chicken paste. I'm gonna put in about a tablespoon to both of the soups. Now I'm gonna put in some heavy whipping cream. It's about a cup. It's about one cup of heavy whipping cream. You can see that the time is 419. The kids are kind of finishing up their school while I do this. I am really glad to have both of these soups going before five o'clock. They can simmer on the stove for a good while and just get tastier and tastier. I'm going to use the rest of the chicken for my other soup here. And in just a minute, I'm going to give my children a recorder lesson and we're gonna go over our 24 Family Ways book while the soups simmer on the stove. So I thought I would share with you a story from when I had six kids, only six kids. <laughs> but on this day, I went to the post office with my six children. And as soon as we walked in, all the people's heads turned toward us. And this was not a rare occurrence. I, I have been, I have been stared at a lot <laughs> when I go places with my children. That probably started around my fourth or fifth child. But anyway, the people's heads turned toward us and some were obviously curious. Some were so sweet and admiring all the little kids and some people were just counting it's funny how you can see them counting in their minds they count the children and just on this day in particular i wondered why do people stare at me everywhere i go and then it hit me we have removed, we have largely removed children from our society. 
people are not really used to seeing them during the day. And they're certainly not used to seeing a lot of children in one family. And this kind of, this sentence kind of flashed in my mind that America has divorced the family. I'm not only speaking of the parents. Yes, many parents are legally divorced, but I'm speaking of the children as well. Our children go off to school or daycare every day away from their parents. The siblings are placed in separate classrooms, often even separate buildings. They come home and go off to their individual rooms with individual TV screens. And perhaps they might go to church where the children go to their own worship service instead of learning to worship alongside their parents. You know, we're often not supposed to take our children anywhere unless there's a playground or a pool or someone to babysit them. We are really focused on entertaining our kids we have entertained them to the point where they can think of nothing else but to be entertained. We are constantly teaching them to be served instead of teaching them to serve. Ultimately, we are living for ourselves too and it trickles down to our children. The sad thing is that the more that we push our children away or push them off onto someone else, the more that our children walk in a way that is not good, following their own devices, as Isaiah 65 2 says. And then we don't really want to, you know, we don't want to take them anywhere. We don't want to take them to the store. We don't want to take them to the post office. We don't want to bring them along because we have not trained them in the Lord. They've really just been socializing with other children and being led astray. Children lead other children astray because foolishness is bound up in the heart of a child. But our children need constant discipleship in order for our children, in order for us to enjoy our children and, and for them to enjoy being with us and for them to enjoy being with other children. They actually cannot enjoy their relationships with other children when they are not treating other children well, when they are not kind, when they're constantly fighting or trying to get ahead in some way with another child. And they are constantly displaying selfishness and a lack of self-control. That is not a good relationship for them or for the other children. We have all heard the scripture, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. I've noticed that parents often feel this scripture is not enough. But there's so much here and in the entire Bible on parenting. That first word, train, implies that our children need training and that they are in training. They are not meant to mindlessly wander through life, constantly seeking 
their next lustful desire. They need to be trained, they need to be brought up in the Lord. And we can't let them be slaves to their sin. Where there is sin, there is slavery. But where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. I am constantly asking God to redirect my steps toward Him, and I know He will, even if I take many detours along the way, and I believe He will for you too. I hope you know that I'm not saying to never take your kids to the park or enjoy entertainment. God does give us clean entertainment as a blessing and I think you have seen on my channel that I like to do fun things with my kids my question for you is are you constantly looking for entertainment for your children instead of requiring them to grow in patience and love toward others I also want you to know that if you are at a place in your life where maybe you are a, maybe you are a single parent, maybe you are a Christian but your spouse is not. You know, there are a lot of different circumstances and there is grace for you. Do what you can in this area. Don't use grace as an excuse. Many can do more than they realize. But spend time with your children in every way that you can. Ask God for more opportunity if that opportunity is not there in your life right now knock and the door will be opened seek and you shall find okay i'm going to catch up on my cooking instructions here you saw me put two cans of the petite diced tomatoes into my chicken tortilla soup and also a hatch green enchilada sauce can. Um, that is a really yummy brand of green enchilada sauce. You might want to try it, but you can also put any enchilada sauce that you like in there. Alright, the next thing I'm adding in is a little jar of diced green chilies. I made this mild so that it's not too spicy for the kids. I'm going to add some garlic powder. Also, some ground cumin. Make it yummy, add plenty of seasoning. You're also going to add some chili powder to this. And some lime juice. That will give it lots of good flavor. Now I'm adding two cans of black beans drained and rinsed into my pot. You can also use pinto beans if you like. I had a little bit of frozen corn in my freezer that needed to get used up. So I'm pouring that in as well. I don't always pour corn into our chicken tortilla soup. I just throw it in there if we have it.
here comes the best part. Just some fresh cilantro leaves. Chopped up a little bit and placed into the soup. They will make it taste so good. I am going to start my rice on the stove that there will be a scoop of rice in each of these soups. I really can't tell you how much I appreciate you being here, especially if you watched till the end. Thank you so much. I hope that you will remember to leave me a comment and let me know which part was your favorite part. Was it the was it the meals or was it the conversation or perhaps both? I hope you will comment below and just say meals, conversation, or both. Or you could say a whole lot more because I do love to hear from you. Love to hear your thoughts. And I will see you real soon.